And that story by Andrew Kilini takes us to the next segment of Newspaper Review. We couple it up with what is captured on the front page of a majority of the newspapers in the country. And Tabitha Ogutu, who is a journalist, a youth leader, and a social justice advocate, joins me this morning to expound more as we take a look at these stories that have been captured. You know, we, in, we weigh in our sentiments even as we look forward to hear from you also as you interact with us. Remember, it's important you tell us what you feel about these particular stories that we are looking at as always hashtag morning cafe at tv47 that is our twitter handle and at linda underscore alela will sample some of your comments as we proceed with the show Tavita, good morning good morning linda yes and that very story by andrin kilemi also captured on the front page of the people's daily and also on the standard newspaper which we have right here uh, speaks of how schools face a tough times on uh, the opening aspect of it and here we are we've been grappling on whether we should open we should reopen and as it is yes there's that desire but looks like times are indeed tough and we've not been able to strike a balance as to whether we should proceed and reopen and whether we are ready to abide by the directions because i realize that most of the entities have been allowed to open or the some of them who who have been allowed to open have only been allowed based on how best they can be able to proceed and follow the government directives. How possible is this, looking at the kinds of schools that we have in the country? Um, I think that um, the, the possibility of reopening the schools really relies on us as the citizens mm -hmm. to abide by the safety rules that were given by the Minister of, Edu of, of Education also and the Minister of Health. Mm. So you realize that uh, yesterday the CS for Education said that uh, if the schools were to reopen at all, then there will be a minimum of students in one class. That is 15 to 20 students. Yeah. You realize this becomes a bigger challenge even for schools, especially in places where the classrooms are, are scarce or they're not in, the, in many numbers, mm -hmm. you see. So this, I think, will prompt a need for the government to look into ways uh, through which they can develop or they can build more classes, especially in marginalized areas like um, in, in areas where uh, the schools do not have the capacity to, you know, to deal with, with, with the numbers mm. and uh, the, 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 the new regulations that have been given by the Minister of Education so that they can be able to reopen school. One, so, would argue, one would argue that actually, is there a place anyway where you find that, you know, there will be this proper infrastructure for schools to manage to do this? Mm -hmm. Will it be, you know, uh, schools, uh, children or school children going to school based on a half-half basis where you say mm -hmm. that some of them will go to school in the morning and some of them later in the afternoon because clearly mm -hmm. I doubt there's any school that now stands the capacity that we are talking about yeah yeah that's true because you know I, I believe every school uh, that uh, exists in the country was built uh, because we did not know the certainties, the certainties of coronavirus pandemic so nobody no school was prepared or nobody was prepared uh, to, to deal with this pandemic it just came in so the schools, I don't think they'll be able to deal with um, the situation as it is, but uh, the safety of the students and also the regulation is a, is, is a matter in hand, mm -hmm. and there's something that needs to be done. So uh, the government said uh, through the CS that uh, there'll be the two rounds. Uh, the students, some students will go to school in the morning, mm -hmm. others will have to go to school some other part of the day. Mm -hmm. So they should just look into ways through which they can make this work. At the end of the day, we need to have our students back to school, because coronavirus is yet to stay. It's mm -hmm. not something that is going away anytime soon. Sadly, yeah. and it unravels a lot of discrepancies within our education sector. I mean, it looks like we have a long way to go to be able to match up. That's true, we have a long way to go. We really have a long way to go because uh, the infrastructure in place is not the infrastructure that we'll say can be able to keep up with the pace. I think the coronavirus cases also are growing every day. So it becomes even a bigger challenge for us as a country or even for schools because, you see, um, I can give a, a good case of uh, a few schools in the rural setups, you see. Uh, like we have seen cases where there are schools which do not even have classrooms that can even, uh, uh, can even accommodate the students that they have initially. Mm -hmm. So with this, new, with this new safety rules and with these new uh, rules that were given yesterday by the CS of education, it even becomes a bigger challenge to them because coping up will become a problem also. The finances, I think, they're inadequate because if they could not be able to, they could not be able to have the infrastructure in place initially. Mm -hmm. What makes it easy for 
them this time round. So the government also ought to think of ways also through which they can help these schools manage with the new rules. All right, yes, that's more like it. And we all wait to mm. see what will happen. What is the magic that Magoha will pull to ensure that this is a success? Let's take a look at some mm. of the measures that we're looking at mm -hmm. and captured as from a one up to around four there. Mm. And the first one is on mass. The government is working towards ensuring that learners have a provide, are, are provided for with free masks when they report to school okay. and in planning to produce 24 million pieces by September and points to classrooms only 15 to 20 learners would be accommodated in classrooms which could be a major challenge in most public schools which are already congested and so also is uh, what happens on private entities and hygiene schools are required to be fumigated have water storage facilities and provide students with sanitizers every school will be expected to have thermal guns to check learners temperature and lastly we have aspect of uh, teachers they would be required to report to school two weeks before the expected reopening uh, date that is in September to undergo training on COVID-19 measures. So we can only cross fingers that this is possible because we are also racing mm -hmm. with time. Let's cross over to the next story and this is on the numbers of COVID-19 right here in the country and patient, patients on home care risk return to isolation. This has been captured on page 8 of the People's Daily. We look at the numbers, 5,206 cases after 254 people tested positive in the last 24 four hours that is as of yesterday's address and 1823 recovered 130 deaths and of course the people who have been tested one 151 396,000 so far. Coming to this page where it has been captured that is page 8 of the people's daily home-based care patients now risk return to isolation and this seems like you know it's coming on board to save the drama and the troubles that we're having at the health sector so i mean are we going round and round in circles and will not be able to get answers yeah most definitely but then uh generally the the home-based care patients uh it's it's, it's a challenge itself you mm -hmm. remember it, okay the houses or the people who come from you know places where they cannot even have the adequate housing so the spaces in their houses cannot allow for social distancing. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the number of people in that house are also, are also high. So it becomes really a huge challenge for them to practice the quarantine measures and also keep up with the pace so that they can get better. Mm -hmm. Now, the government, uh, since onset um, of uh, the home care patient uh, safety measures, yeah. I needed to have it in mind that uh, it's not a possible thing for every home to have mm -hmm. such. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the best thing the government can do is to allocate or create other isolation centers, many of them in the country, so that any patient that is found with the coronavirus uh, uh, symptoms can be taken there so mm -hmm. that we are sure that... Uh, if you are a patient of coronavirus, then you're at the quarantine and you're getting better. Now, we cannot assume that when you're at home, you're, you're, you're following the safety rules. There's, and uh, you know many people are so ignorant of the fact that there's nobody there to watch them. And therefore, they just follow the rules the way they want it. Mm -hmm. So I think the government needs to create more isolation centers mm -hmm. so that they can monitor. Yeah. Oh. That's they, amazing. Yeah. And of course, mm. uh, still on reports on what is happening on COVID-19, mm. Commissioner, uh, that is the trans -Zoria County Emergency Response Committee, mm -hmm. uh, now argues that uh, truck drivers are adhering to COVID-19 rules, contrary to what has been projected, what has been said, mm -hmm. that they have been abating this. And also right here is another report on matters COVID-19, mm -hmm. uh, so not really matters COVID-19, but matters health. Uh, mm -hmm. There's an interesting story right here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, good Samaritans reach out to Mombasa drug addicts. Our organization comes in handy in support of vulnerable abuses in coastal town amid embedded health issues. That's an interesting story out there. And also one on COVID-19. COVID-19 might wipe out gains in communicable diseases. This one I would love you to react to because we have made so much gains in mm -hmm. dealing with uh, cancer. We have made so much gains in dealing with the likes of also malaria. We've done so much, you know, gains in terms of dealing with HIV and AIDS mm -hmm. and other communicable diseases. Diseases, of course, some of them not there. Mm -hmm. And looking at how much energy has been channeled towards fighting COVID-19 is now a global, a global, you know, concern. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the communicable diseases were equally a global concern. But it looks like for a moment we have stopped focusing on them, and we have channeled all our minds, resources to COVID-19. What does it mean? 
uh, it only means that uh, as a country we need to to also focus on what is affecting us internally. Mm -hmm. You know, coronavirus is a global pandemic. Every country is fighting it globally. But at the same time, we cannot ignore our own health sector. Yeah. We have issues to deal with that. We have, uh, we have the HIV patients also uh, are, are at a crisis if they're not taken care of well. Uh, we also have other cases like the fight against malaria. The other time we were seeing that uh, the, also the, 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 the education sector is at a higher risk because we saw that there are high numbers of uh, teenage pregnancies. Yeah. So it only means that the government is not really paying attention that is expected to what is happening in the country. Rather, mm -hmm. it's so concentrated in fighting coronavirus, which in my, in my own opinion is not a bad thing. But then there's more need for the government to narrow down to matters that affects the country's interests, for mm -hmm. example. And know? now that you mm -hmm. spoke about teenage pregnancies, it got mm -hmm. me, I was actually looking at this cartoon edition mm -hmm. of the People's Daily. Pretty much said a mm -hmm. cartoon to view, but actually what you've just said, that mm -hmm. probably we as a society, mm -hmm. the government itself is burying its head on the sun. This is my interpretation of the cartoon edition, if you can see that. Yeah. You can see that the society has buried its head mm -hmm. on the sun. I mean, we're clearly trying to overlook some of these key things that could be playing out in regards to what is happening yes. as to child sex offenders. And here we are, mm -hmm. uh, children are being offended by the day. The monster is right there, confidently winning the race. As we are busy saying that probably those numbers that are being projected are not true. And anyway, it is true they could not be true. But yeah. who is supposed to mm -hmm. come out and tell us that these are the numbers, this is the reality on ground, if the government itself is questioning? Yeah, you know, Linda, one thing that's... Uh uh, we can say as a country that mm -hmm. as much as the numbers can be overrated, but the situation in the ground is quite different. Mm -hmm. uh, this, the, 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 the teenagers are really undergoing, the, the, uh, the statistics suggest, and the numbers are there. Yeah. And therefore, it therefore uh, calls for the need for us to be more keen and more, and more aware what is happening in the society. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the issue of teenage pregnancy is an issue that is of grave concern. Mm -hmm. and it should be dealt with the seriousness. Uh, we've seen that uh, there, we're going to have a situation whereby when the, when the students will be going back to school in September, yeah, yeah. they're going to be having mothers, young mothers, not even students. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about as a country? That has an impact in our economic, political, even the social uh, aspect of the country. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if this matter is not addressed, if we cannot speak about it, if we can just be ignorant and say that uh, this, this are just... Um, figures which are not correct and therefore the thing is not happening and it is really happening then we are not doing anything mm -hmm. and therefore it calls for the need for the parents to talk with their children at home you know uh, for a minute i was thinking that um, many 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 of these teenagers actually they are getting pregnant not because they actually are aware but because they have not been told what it means to be a teenager right. as a teenager you are fertile as a teenager you go under uh, some some sort of reproduction changes reproductive yeah. changes in the body and if you're not told about them then you'll just be going around messing around you think that you're having fun and then boom you get pregnant and then who is to be blamed the mm -hmm. society is to be blamed because even some of uh, we say that uh, we, you, you just say you're just talking of uh, a few people were taking advantage of these young girls. Yeah. They're not held accountable. They're not held accountable and therefore they just go scot-free. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes a habit and at the end of the day, the girls suffer most. Mm -hmm. Therefore, something needs to be done. The parents need to speak to their children about matter sex. It should not be a taboo anymore. And also the community needs to take care of the girls. Mm -hmm. And all those irresponsible male adults need to stop seeing the girls as instruments of sexual gratification. And mm -hmm. that way, we'll be able to empower them. We'll be able to make them go to school and become the responsible citizen they ought to be and not young mothers. Yes. Indeed, I agree. It's mm -hmm. time that we address these issues as they're supposed to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Long gone are the days of pointing fingers. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a generational gap. You cannot sit them down mm -hmm. and talk to them. We need to speak these things and, of course, speak out the ills of a society. Definitely. Let's cross over to politics now, the politics mm -hmm. of the nation. It's all BBI politics, says Waiguru. In battle, Kirinyaga governor dismisses impeachment motion against her. And, of course, um, she says it's witch hunt by those unhappy with her profile yeah looking at bbi and how much she's been on the front line in fronting this of course this mm -hmm. has taken her somewhere up there at, at the level of indeed building a profile that is worth uh, considering as you know one who would be looked at as a political master
And when we take a look at these stories that have been captured on the People's Daily, captured on a page four, it's BBI Politics, where Guru claims on her trials, Governor has been a pivotal figure in rallying support for the referendum project, especially in a central region. And when you look at this and the impeachment process up until the, uh, at that point where, of course, the Senate was hearing this and we're expected to get a verdict by tomorrow, what do you make of the entire thing? Uh, you know, the, the, the case of Waiguru is not any different from other cases we've, we've seen in the country, even yeah. the case of Waitito the other time when he was impeached. But then what makes it different is the fact that uh, there is a committee that has been put in place mm. to look into the evidences and make an evidence-based decision so that we can determine best really if the claims that were alleged against her are of, of, are of any substantial um, facts. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But then... Uh, well, Guria said, I've been following this case and it's been very interesting. The way, right. yeah, mm -hmm. the way she's been saying that uh, these this are just some allegations which do not have any, any, any substantial evidences. And she has all the evidence to prove that they're not. So it's a, it's a pull, pull situation. Mm -hmm. And the, the side of the MCA is who voted uh, the vote of no confidence against her. They also want to win. Also her, she also want to win. And therefore, what we can have as a country or what we, we, we should have as a country is a situation whereby justice is served. So the justice will be served based on the findings that the Senate uh, committee mm -hmm. will, will, will put in place. Yeah. You know, we cannot just assume that she is she, she has um, abused the office, she's grossly uh, violated the constitutional requirements according to chapter 6 of the constitution. Yeah. We can also not say that uh, she is Mr. Pro she's a Mr. Mr. Prophet Defense, uh, as it was said earlier, yeah. as an allegation by the MCAs of the Kirinyaga County mm -hmm. Assembly. So what we can do is just wait and see how the verdict will go. Mm -hmm. I've also had uh, arguments that this might be just a formality. Ooh, okay. And the situation may be compromised. Mm. But I'd like to say that sometimes it's good to just give benefit of doubt mm -hmm. and uh, cross our fingers that we're going to be served with the best of, uh, of, the, the, of justice mm -hmm. and we're going to get the justice out of all the situation. And uh, at the end of the day, the people of Kirinyaga will be able to, to say that uh, actually the committee that has been allocated with the task at, at hand mm -hmm. has, been, has dealt with this matter in a way that is supposed to. And also to add on top of that, yeah. uh, I've, I've had allegations that... Uh, uh, that we are trying to, uh, or many other female leaders are coming in hand to support Waiguru, yeah. and they are saying that uh, this is just one of those, um, of those, of those times that they are fighting a female leader, mm -hmm. because you know being a female leader, especially in a gubernatorial position like Waiguru is holding, yeah. is quite challenging. But then I will challenge and say that as female leaders as well, we encourage full transparency, mm. accountability, and integrity. Mm. So that because we do not get into these offices by, by just chance or we are not lucky to get them, we go for the seats like just other contestants do. And therefore, if you find of uh, inco in, incompetence, yeah. then the law of the of, of the of the of the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the law the long harm of the law should also play mm. part in this. And therefore, let us just see justice being served and let's not make uh, unjustified comments yeah. or opinions about the whole situation. Let us wait and see tomorrow. Mm -hmm. As mm. we await for that, we hold on to the words of the chair of the committee, that is Cleop Senator Cleopas Malala. Mm. He says that indeed he ensures that the people of Kenya are going to get justice out of this. Mm -hmm. uh, still on matters politics, Kinjuri now surprises us. Mm -hmm. This has been captured on uh, page six of the... People's Daily, and also the front page of the Standard Newspaper, uh, Rutos Mount Kenya Ally Dumps Jubilee and launches a new party. And there you go, and we have it right here. Mm -hmm. Yes, the party. And of course, it's supposed to give service to the people. So it's called the Service Party. Mm -hmm. What do you make of this? I mean, honestly, you asked our dreams of valid. And yes, she mm -hmm. has some stamina. Uh, he has a, some stamina, sorry, on matters politics. So wrong move or best move at this time? I think um, I think uh, all these are in the preparation for the 2022 elections, yeah. and uh, uh, I think that Sakinjuri will be one of the rivals that the deputy 
uh, president we love to deal with oh, yeah? uh, in the 22 run for the presidency. Mm -hmm. And therefore, this is a good move. You know, Kenya is a democratic republic. Yeah. And therefore, you're allowed to form parties, you're allowed to come with your manifestos, and you're allowed to you do what you can do as long as it meets the constitutional requirements. So let's see how it will go. Otherwise, we wish them all the best. But I think mm -hmm. it's quite a move and it's quite a challenge, and the deputy president should be prepared for something, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy. All know, right. We wait for his communication. He said <laughs> that it should be clear that he's not going to run for the like keep your gubernatorial seat. Mm -hmm. So we wait for his communication on whether he's going to go for the top of seat. Mm -hmm. And again, we also talk about the constitutional changes that are looming. We mm -hmm. do not know whether this is going to play out, but we can only wait to see. And still on matters politics, mm -hmm. DP allies threaten court action over railway secrets. And I think the SGR has been an issue right now. Mm -hmm. We might not delve that deep into that because, again, it's still something that is being, uh, you know, probed. Mm -hmm. We can only wait to see. But also on matters transport, mm -hmm. uh, Moha says that he's not going to relent. He's going to ensure that the impeachment process against CS for matters Trump, uh, transport, that is Masharia, will proceed as he expects them to. Did you pay in Parliament? Did you pay in Parliament most definitely? And mm -hmm. I think. Uh, if the issue of parliament is going to bring out some light for the Kenyans, because all we need is transparency, accountability, and we also need responsible leaders. Yeah. So if the issue of is going to bring us uh, those corruption cases, you know, for a long time Kenya has been fighting corruption. Mm -hmm. It's become like cancer in the country, you know. It's eating up the economy, it's eating up everything. And therefore, our leaders need to come to the fact that uh, we cannot just do things the same way we used to do them for our own benefit because some of our leaders are very greedy. You're given a position to work mm. and you think about yourself. You embezzle the funds and you do not think of what the citizen will benefit out of it. Yeah. So at the end of the day, if the CS for transport is found to be uh, of in any incapacitation mm. or to have used the funds that are located for development of infrastructure and the transport system as it is, uh, you should be held accountable, yeah. yes? Like just any other, any other leader we have seen before. Mm. Others have gone home out of the fact that they could not be responsible of the position they were given. And therefore, if Jicho Pevu can make this come to light and we see the proof at the end of the day, it's not all about allegation, but evidence-based decisions, mm -hmm. then that is what we need to see. All right. Yes. And I have lost this one. There's, a, there's, there's one that has been captured on the front page of the Standard newspaper. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'll tell you all the same. It's about the Bromans and, of course, the handshake that we are talking about right Right now mm -hmm. and their argument is that it's just a matter of time before we see tough times for right when over right loudinga and president to kenyatta is it so historically what we've seen also i mean people coming together alliances mm -hmm. we have you know this uh, coalitions mm -hmm. and then eventually it's never good it's never a good divorce uh, what i can say that uh, since the onset the handshake was a very 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 applaudable idea yeah because it brought the country together we were divided along very dangerous lines mm. including the lines of ethnicity such that you when you see me uh, as, a, as a kikuyu or as a kalenjin or as a luo you only see the tribe in me but you could not see the person that i am and what i bring to the national development so the handshake coming in hand ensured that uh, we had unity. So the sense of unity and the sense of national development and all that and uh, coming up with, uh, coming together with our leaders, uh, the, the Honorable Rai Loding and our President uh, uh, Uru Kenyatta was a very, very thought of uh, process and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and idea. Mm. So I, I, I would like us to look at this, uh, at this issue in this way, that uh, the handshake primarily was not meant to to devastate or to bring down any political alliance or formation number one it was for the benefit of the people of kenya so whether or not the handshake is going to or whether or not uh, the president and uh, the former premier, uh, Honorable Raila Odinga, are going to break out. Mm. This has happened before. We've seen them in other, in other instances. But let us just be positive. That will be a, that will be a political thing. It's not be primarily handshake because handshake was not a political move. Mm. It was a move to unite the people of Kenya and to ensure that the president attained his four big four agenda mm. at the end of his tenure. All right. So yeah. Mm -hmm. mm.
Okay, thank you so much, Abida. And now, we, as we wind up on this, still we're having some adjustments or in the budget, interestingly. Treasury now shocks members of Parliament with yet another mini-budget at a year-end. And among beneficiaries of new allocations are fights against COVID-19, city commuter train, and interior ministry projects. Um, wouldn't want us to delve deep into this, but officially, 2020 has been declared a dead year. Would you declare it the same? Uh, I think we can say that he's dead here, but there is hope still. Yeah. Because necessarily, if we can say that uh, 2020 is a dead year, then we'll be, we'll be losing hope. And uh, this is what we need uh, right now. We are fighting a very serious pandemic globally. It's affected the economic situations of countries worldwide. Not a country has not been affected. And therefore, we can say that uh, 2020 is a dead year. It can be a dead year because a lot of things, a lot of activities have not been able to, to be implemented, you know, economically and even in other sections of the, of, of, of the country as it is. So mm -hmm. still there is hope that at the end of the day we shall be able to get something out of it, but not really everything. But then we have hope. So yeah. it's not necessarily a very dead year. But it's a here that we can uh, we can expect even just you know there's a hand that is light at the end of the tunnel so mm -hmm. we need to be positive about everything what we need right now as a country is not um, is not to be negative about situations because we're already facing a lot as a country a lot of families are going hungry a lot of um, a lot of people are losing their lives uh, there are increasing numbers of coronavirus cases every day so it's a concern the only thing we can do is be hopeful and also you know just hope for the best at the end of the day. Yes, indeed. We cross our fingers for the best. There's still so much mm. that has been captured in the newspapers. We were not able to go through all of them. Haji wants court in a curfew. Boys killing denied a bail. Mm -hmm. There you go. The police officer was arrested and charged with murder of a minor in Kiamaiko area in March this year. Of course, the police brutality also an issue of concern mm. and many mm -hmm. people discussing about that. You want to weigh in something small about that? Yes, I would sure. like, like to weigh in something small about that, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as as as, as the police or as the the board in charge of protecting yeah. the citizens of Kenya is supposed to do that you know even as their motto suggests so to me Shikowate does mm. not mean brutality you're supposed to give direction you're supposed to protect the citizens you're not supposed to use the, the laws or you're not supposed to use the power that you're given to make others life difficult especially going to the extreme of claiming lives through just you know just through manners that are not very 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 good so mm -hmm. the the police department are uh, supposed to ensure that they protect the citizens of kenya mm -hmm. and they do not use the force when dealing with them the other ways of solving uh conflict the other ways of coming up to terms but certainly killing or doing away with the life is not one of them mm -hmm. they should rectify and serve the people instead of using force against them and even claiming lives is very unfortunate and is a matter that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. yes. And in uh, talking about, of course, uh, protecting and preserving life, mm -hmm. there's still some bad skirmishes ongoing, and I now. Uh, that is in different uh, areas, especially the Kapedu uh, area, as always. And I mean, uh, now Natembea comes out to say that you will pay for your sins. That is George Natembea, mm -hmm. and uh, the security boss warns the these people and he gives them actually a stern warning mm -hmm. that uh, of course if you continue to fund uh, bloody skirmishes mm -hmm. you will ensure uh, or the government will ensure that you face dire consequences in regards to the same so we can only hope that uh, mm -hmm. peace will prevail and so much so on matters news but we'll not delve into looking at everything thank you so much uh, tabitha ogutu once again a journalist a youth leader and a social justice advocate for the great insights as we take a look on the newspapers it's now time that we take a short break we'll be coming bo with more of course on the state of affairs we take a look at the current issues that are ongoing right here in the country the key topics that we'll be discussing later on with the panel so don't you go anywhere remember your feedback is very very important hashtag morning cafe at tv47 at linda underscore alela our twitter handles let's get to hear what you have to say as we proceed after this break morning cafe is back with much more
And a time for state of affairs in the country right here as we take a look at the politics of the day and equally, you know, the current affairs, the issues that are taking a center stage right here on Morning Cafe. And again, joining me for this session is Tabitha Ogutu, journalist, youth leader and social justice advocate. Equally, we have Edgar Kosge, who is a political analyst and will also be lucky enough to get somebody else on Skype, that is Kijana Steve, on, uh, who's a political scientist later on as we proceed with the broadcast Edgar yes Mambo VP ah, good morning Linda been a minute man. Hey, it's coming, been it's coming a minute sana, eh? yes and I will pay me chacha I can't wait to hear your take on technically everything that is happening I know and once again it's... Sasa uh -huh. All right, Tabitha, yeah. mm -hmm. we have you again. Thank you for having me. Yes, yeah, so we cross over. Okay, well, I think we'll start with this particular story that we also had touched on. I mean, was the very first one that we looked at on matters education mm -hmm. before we delve in politics because politics is something else. Mm -hmm. Victor, I mean, students are supposed to go back to school. If not supposed to, then at least if we're able to balance, we'll have them go back to school in September. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been tough it's like more of a guesswork affair for students for parents for teachers reports that are coming from home are not impressive at all sincerely speaking what do we do uh, we have a very we have a very serious crisis uh, in, in in the education sector mm -hmm. that needs to be addressed and uh, as i said before that uh, it all relies on our effort as citizens to you know uh, to adhere to the rules that, and the set of rules that were given by the Minister of Education and also by the Health Ministry, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yesterday, the CS for Education said that uh, if at all the students are, are going to school, uh, he said there's a pro possibility, but not really, because we're not sure of the numbers uh, when it comes to September. Maybe they'll be higher than what we have. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the expectation. And uh, if they were to go to school at all, then there's a maximum number of students in every class. And as we say, it's a challenge because the infrastructure in place may not be able to accommodate the new changes. So mm -hmm. we all have our fingers crossed and uh, we hope that the Ministry of Education also have uh, it in place that they put in mechanisms and measures that will ensure that uh, even the regulations well, that they give to the teachers are adhered to and they're able to be implemented at the okay. end of the day, yeah. All right, and Edgar, I think I wanted to yes. say Edgar and instead I said Victor. So. Here we are, and much as it's very much important to prepare, I uh -huh. think we can see the education ministry trying its level best to just try and figure out. Yes. Uh, some people then would ask, Kuna Lazima Gani, must we force issues? And as Tabitha has said, mm. we are expecting the numbers to be worse based on the projections that we got from the health uh, experts. Linda, um, we are not dying soon. So let us not push our children to go back to school. And let us not feel like um, if we don't go to school, we are going to lose anything. Let's be practical. Yes. Let's be practical. We, we I don't know whether you anywhere. guys feel what I normally feel. Like, honestly, we we'll require class 8. I, I know that is not the only important thing, the class 8 and the form 4 bit. Mm -hmm. But you ask yourself, like, sincerely speaking, you are on that verge of saying that I'm done and dusted with secondary school, done and dusted with primary school. Mm -hmm. You know, that excitement, that uh, anxiousness is now being just leveled as useless. And you know what? We look more on the aspect of life as opposed to how important a transition that can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, L Linda, um, if, if, if we joke around, we can be done and dusted and we can be buried any time. Mm -hmm. If we joke around with um, the coronavirus um, um, thing. Now, <clears throat> coronavirus uh, got into our country and uh, it caught us unprepared. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at issues in a different way. And we have to explain to our children that schools are not going anywhere. Yeah. Or if we joke around, we might get it rough from coronavirus, uh, Linda. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the issue of getting uh, pupils to go to class, um, to have 15 pupils in a class, is not practical. Yeah. We are actually struggling with, first, having 100 pupils uh, in a class uh, and uh, um, one teacher running a hundred pupils in a class. Are we even going to get close to having 15 pupils? You know, we should not be talking about private schools. Mm. Magoha should be talking about public schools. Public schools that look like they are going to fall the next minute. Mm. Public schools made of wood. Public schools that 
that are just um, they are run down. Right. And then you talk of 15 pupils in a class. Sometimes I see a doctor, a professor of a magnitude of Magoha mm -hmm. explaining things that he doesn't understand. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, okay. but well, this is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Magoha should approach things in, um, in, a, in a Kenyan way. Yeah. As in, let's understand each other. And let's say, let's tell our kids that if we are not careful, we might be messed up by this virus. And mm -hmm. schools are not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. he, he, he suggested that we might be having our exams in April mm -hmm. or something somewhere. Uh, That's okay. Uh, Tabitha, okay. Yes. Tabitha yes. Uh, if we are Kenyan enough, mm -hmm. then uh, if you speak to any teacher who, mm -hmm. of course, teaches a private school, yeah. they would tell you, let's be Kenyan enough. Honestly, we want to go back to our mm -hmm. jobs because literally they're not getting anything as of now. Yes. I mean, at least the government, uh, you know, teachers are, and, and the public <coughs> teachers are being paid something. Mm -hmm. But what happens to the uh, private school teachers who sort of are now struggling to survive? And any other Kenyan who's mm -hmm. struggling to survive right now, they will literally tell you, mm -hmm. let us be Kenyan enough face it anyway let's proceed and have our students in school let's go and you know mm -hmm. regain normalcy to the julia belly mm -hmm. yeah you know you know uh, with all uh, this issue of uh, students going back to school i will say that uh, this year of education is very particular i say that uh, the classes are there and you cannot teach a dead student you cannot mm -hmm. teach a corpse so definitely you cannot take your student to school or your child to school and there is this pandemic going on. So we, mm -hmm. it's just being objective in the sense that uh, in case things get better, then if the students were to go to school at all, then the numbers have to be uh, in the maximum uh, limit, the mm -hmm. 15 to 20 students in one class. Yeah. So he's just trying to be objective. And again, he's trying to work his way through the clock so that he ensures that uh, even if uh, the coronavirus is able to be tackled in a way that uh, brings hope to the country as a whole mm -hmm. and the economy is reopened and the schools can also go back to normalcy, then we'll have an, a situation whereby, you know, the students will have to be 15 to 20 in class. Mm. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the private school teachers, they have been trying. I can say that uh, there have been virtual learning going around, yeah. uh, literally throughout the country, you know. And uh, I think the parents to these students have been able to, to pay up. But then you see that they are greatly affected because they're not able to get some income. Just like that woman Boga who is not able to open her kiosk mm -hmm. because they do not have the, the, the finance and the situations are tough, the economic times are so hard to deal with. The, the teachers are also faced with that, uh, th with that uh, challenge. And therefore, it calls for a need for the parents of these private going students to stand up and support these teachers, especially when they're giving the virtual learning uh, uh, so that the, the, the learning continues. Because mm -hmm. this, the teachers have to put food on the table at the end of the day. They have to support their families and they solely rely on what they get as an income mm -hmm. as, 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 um, yeah, as teachers. Yes. All right. Okay, let's drop that and cross mm -hmm. over to politics. I mean, we all await to see mm -hmm. what will happen, eagerly waiting for September or just say August, mm -hmm. so we get the actual reports that will be coming from the Ministry of Education on what mm -hmm. we should do moving forward. Mm -hmm. Let's talk matters politics. And I think, you see, mm -hmm. in as much as you'd want to discuss something else, you find yourself that, you know, there's so much in the cup of matters politics, in the plate of politics in the country that you cannot run away from it. And yesterday, mm -hmm. when looking at some of the newspaper you, you know in the country and you know mm -hmm. trying to capture how of course we are getting political alliances and you know we're seeing parties coming together mm -hmm. we're getting sort of coalitions and uh, you know we're talking about key figures that are very strong in the country well say for the likes of Kinjuri who just joined in the other day we had this uh, paper asking uh, you know United in fear and, you know, capturing uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, Right Honorable Raila Odinga, Deputy President William Ruto, Gideon Moy, that is a senator, and, of course, uh, Musalia Mudavadi, Moses Wetangula, and Kalozo Musioka, all key figures grappling for survival. Edgar, uh, yes. where does it place them on, uh, you know, this talk of 2022? Genuinely, is there any of them who's willing to step aside for the other? Um, first and foremost, uh, let me let me just conclude. Uh, the, 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 the I had a point. Yes, on, the, on, on matters education. Yes, sure. on, on matters education. Mm -hmm. I wanted to tell Kenyans that the government will not always protect you people. The government will not always think for you. Yeah, you have to think for yourselves, and also you have to tell the government you are wrong. Mm. You can't do this because 
Gov- the government might make mistakes. These are our people. These mm-hmm. are our brothers and sisters and our, they are our fathers. Yeah. They can make mistakes and we can all die. Mm-hmm. So guys, think and tell the government, no, no. Uh, we, we don't have money anyway to sustain ourselves. Mm. The government also has to think of ways to sustain us. Out but of just this. How, much, how much will the government listen to the people, honestly? Well, sometimes it takes us to barricade the roads. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and if you're not calling for that. <laughs> if and okay. tell them you are not passing here. Uh-huh. Come on. Uh-huh. Anyway. Then you, <laughs> you will lack it though because you will have gone against, you know, the, the restrictions that have been put aboard yes, in yes. regards to COVID-19. We know we've seen demonstrations across the world uh-huh. and then we ask ourselves, yes. we're talking about measures, but then again, we're not abiding by the same measures. Yes. Now, let me weigh in on the politics yeah. of the day. Who is willing to step aside for another? hmm uh-huh. I don't think um, anyone is f- for now, yeah. but someone will step aside for another later. For sure. When, when you see that this one has higher chances mm-hmm. and this one doesn't have higher chances. Okay. So people will come together according to numbers. People will, bring, will, will do calculations on the table. Mm-hmm. There are people who used, to, who used to call for the registers of the IEBC yeah. and they used to look at Hapa ni watu wangapi na hapa ni watu wangapi. Jay, how many yeah, people are you me. carrying? Sometimes we play political um, tribal card. Yeah. You say, Luya, how many are you? Mm-hmm. Can you line up behind this person? Can you? Can can Luya be trusted? Mm-hmm. If if Luya can be trusted mm. behind someone, then someone can have an alliance with Luya. Yeah. Are Kalenjins able to line behind someone? You know. Mm-hmm. So so right now people are coming up with parties, and I'm wondering why I don't have a party. You need to I'm think about that. You, you really need I, to, I need to, to think really about that. Right? that. But yeah. please don't get confused. Be because again, cow. multi-partisan is just something <laughs> funny. Everyone coming up with a party and sometimes you ask yourself, really? Really, even as a Kenyan, you just get worried on behalf That's of That's a cash cow, Linda. But now, coming to that very point and, and looping in, Tabitha. Tabitha, uh, we are looking at a scenario where, well, historically, this is what has been happening and what Edgar says. Yeah, mm-hmm. It reaches a point where by now we have to make decisions. Mm-hmm. We are almost to the last lapse, the final touches, and we have to decide who is going to carry the day. Look at these key figures that we're talking about. Right, mm-hmm. Honorable Raila Odinga, President Uhuru Kenyatta. Uh, Baringo, uh, that, that is the Senator uh, Gideon Moy, yeah. and we have Deputy President William Ruto, Musalia Mudavadi, Moses Wetangula, mm-hmm. and the likes of Kalonzo Musioka. And looking back at 2017, mm-hmm. the alliances and the mergers that these people had crafted together. I mean, the arguments were clear, as they would say, President Uhuru Kenyatta saying, Kumiangu. Kumiako. Hey. Tell me how Deputy President William Ruto will think otherwise and say, it's okay, well, because you carry the numbers, Mount Kenya numbers, well, let's give it back to you again. Look at Right Honorable Raila Odinga. You know, mm-hmm. as many say, would say, that was his last bullet, but it looks like they're likely he's going to get another bullet. And then one asks, who is it going, I mean, how is it going to, uh, to be possible for him to say that, okay, President Uru Kenyatta, you have the Mount Kenya numbers, like you said, Kibaki Tosha at some point, and then, you know, just bury your head in the sand and decide, okay, let's proceed and front this person. Look at the key figures here. Yeah, the likes of Kalonzo Musioka, the likes of Mudavadi, they also had a memorandum at some point in time that we're pushing you to the last bullet right on Aburela Odinga. Then after that, leave, it the, uh, leave the ground for us. Like, mm-hmm. honestly, who is going to lay it bare and say that it's okay, it is time for us to do that? Uh, what I like about the whole uh, political scenario in the country mm-hmm. at the moment is that democracy is being practiced, you see? Uh, the political democracy allows for literally any person that wants to vie for any political seat to, mm-hmm. you know, to, to go for it. And therefore, it gives us as citizens opportunity to elect the leaders we want. Mm. It gives us choices. You know, if you have limited choices, if you can only have, for example, the Honorable Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta battling out for the presidency in the country, mm. I tell you that we'll not be having options. But if you have the likes of Mudavali coming in, the likes of the Deputy President coming in, the likes of... Um, the rest coming in, and even we saw the other, the other time King Jury launching his party. So we hope that he's going to be coming in mm-hmm. uh, to vie for the presidency. Mm-hmm. So we have alternatives, and we have our, uh, we have numbers to pick from. And therefore, as a country now, this is the time we need to be of sound mind. Mm. We go by the manifestos, see the delivery, and for example, for the leaders who have been there uh, in in the early years, you know, of, of mm-hmm. administration, we have to put them in office 
on the basis or on the credit of their performance and how they were able to deliver to us. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we have an opportunity to do new. We've been complaining of so many issues of corruption. Mm -hmm. We've been complaining of many issues of uh, matters not addressed. We had so many leaders campaigning uh, in the in the in the the last election and mm -hmm. saying that they will do this for us, they'll do this to better our lives. They never did it. And right now we have an opportunity, you know, they're coming in and we see, we can vet them and see and ascertain that we elect them on the merit, mm -hmm. the basis of merit. So mm -hmm. the, the, the coming up of, of the new political parties or the new leaders who want to vie for the presidential position mm -hmm. is quite a good thing for us as a country. We'll be able to exercise democracy, vote for what we believe in, and also via our options. So Really, this is a good thing. Is the mm -hmm. democracy being practiced, and I love it. All right, wait, wait a minute. Yes. Uh, wait a minute, Edgar. Before you yes, come yes. in, allow me. I mean, to get back to Tabitha and yes, I yes. invade your personal space mm. a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was listening to some youths speaking in a different forum. All right. And interestingly, one of the youths was mm -hmm. your sister. Yes. I don't ask me how I got to know that. <laughs> and this was her argument. Mm -hmm. Do we really have democracy at all? Is there anything called democracy in the country? Mm -hmm. I mean, the quest has been there and we all talk about democracy do we even understand what democracy is and then here you are you're talking about us making the best of democracy mm -hmm. so sometimes I'd want to know do you come from the same home and do you sit down to argue this on such issues because according to her <laughs> yeah. and you know she had a value argument mm -hmm. that honestly she does not believe there's something to do with democracy right here in the country mm -hmm. and whether we have an, uh, an idea of what exactly democracy is are we confused are we just trying to copy paste what uh -huh. is in other plot or in other countries in other areas you know in other mature democracies mm -hmm. and assuming that we can craft the same for ourselves? Uh, Linda, your argument is quite something, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, Kenya is a young democracy, as I will say it. Uh, what I said was uh, that uh, the fact that so many leaders or so many uh, figures are coming out and they want to vote for this position gives us uh, the alternative to pick the right leaders. Mm. So we are able to exercise our democracy in voting. You're a democratic person if you're given the right to vote. And that is what we, all of us have been given. But unless we have the, the cases where the, the elections are rigged and stuff like that, mm -hmm. so our demo democracy is curtailed. Oh, my sister said, uh, as you said, I, I never I never heard that. Yeah. But she, you've now let me know. Mm -hmm. And she said that uh, Kenya at all, there's a doubt if democracy is there. Mm -hmm. There are instances that point towards infringement of rights and also the democratic rights of Kenyan citizens and, and, and the country as a whole. So those are the instances that makes us wonder, are we really a democratic country, especially when, when rules are made for us? Uh, like Edgar said uh, in a few minutes ago, he said that... Uh, the, the, the CS for education at all, it never involves, you know, the, the country mm -hmm. uh, in its decision making. As a democratic country, we are not, we're supposed to be asked as parents or as stakeholders or even as just teachers, are mm -hmm. we really able to go back to school when uh, this pandemic is going on? So in such cases where we're not asked and decisions are made for us, then democracy is being curtailed. Mm -hmm. And therefore we can ask ourselves, is this really a democratic country? Mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, the progress and how we're seeing, and also we've been seeing a lot of political, political uh, changes of late. We've mm -hmm. seen the president trying to, to do away with the, uh, uh, the deputy president uh, allies, you right. see, uh, in the key political positions, mm -hmm. and in a way that uh, we find to be very, very interesting. You know, we do not know his intentions, but we hope they are good intentions for the country mm -hmm. and the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a democ it's not democratic at all, if mm -hmm. you ask me, because uh, uh, on the basis of when you went to the office and you were told that you can perform, and again now you're being just told that you cannot do it because. Uh, there's some sort of uh, and disloyalty and things like that. And party loyalty is key because remember, it's, it's also democratic, as one would say, mm -hmm. for parties to craft their own constitution. And you know, members should abide and follow the rules of the same constitution, the Definitely. party constitution. Yes. So then again, mm -hmm. it, it becomes you know pretty hard to get to just no what where do we strike a balance in this case where do we strike a balance is the, is the question here mm. really is where do we strike a balance where did, does the democracy come in mm. and where also does the party interest come in right. so at the end of the day kenya is a young democracy we are trying really in some areas but we're really failing in so many of areas and therefore that is the question is kenya really a democratic country all right yes. uh -huh. edgar now you can come in yes 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 mm. now the i i um the, my first point before, you were yeah. asking about uh, the coalitions in 2017. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to tell you is that uh, uh, now that Kalonzo is on the other side yeah. and has decided to sign on his, on his own mm -hmm. into President Uhuru's side, yeah. NASA is dead. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, that's what <laughs> they say. So they say, okay, well, uh, is it official? Nothing dead. Nobody would tell you otherwise. Nothing. Nobody would tell you otherwise. It says that they've not come together. Yeah. You know, they had an agreement. Yeah. This agreement has not been revoked. Keep so according to him, was... NASA is <laughs> as good as alive. <laughs> ah. Well, well, well. That one we can argue about. All right. And number two, you are talking about democracy. Mm -hmm. Democracy is all about uh, the people having the numbers mm -hmm. uh, having their way. Yeah. And the people who don't have their numbers having their say. Mm -hmm. It is as simple as that. If you look at the country, do you have many people having their way? Yes. Okay. Do you have the few people being trampled upon and having their little say? Yes. Oh, yeah? It's a democracy. Okay. Yeah, as so simple we, as we that. So we qualify? Sorry? We, we qualify yes, to be, to we be qualify. termed as... We qualify. Is, is it the case? Yeah. Again, yesterday, is it yesterday or the day before yesterday that I had someone here mm -hmm. and the argument again was this because I like referring a lot to some of these arguments that we have. Yes. And according to him actually is that in as much as maybe the majority could be the people, who are the people actually are supposed to have their, uh, their, their way. It is certain that, you know, the, 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 the key figures and you know uh, the runners or the leaders are the people who have the say and they say is what stands out to be you know uh, final and I eventually Actually, it transforms to be the way of the activities right in the country. That's why he argues that, you know, sometimes it's, uh, the elections are just formalities where yes. you just go there to, to, to pretend as though, yes, the majority are out here and this is what they have said and this is what they have, they have declared. But eventually, the people who have the say will now determine what will play out. That, that, that is true, Linda. Mm -hmm. But there's something I wanted, uh, there's something that you had uh, spoken about, mm. um, uh, uh, about party loyalty mm. mm -hmm. and party psychophancy right and um, and democracy within the party mm -hmm. so when your rights to talk about anything are curtailed that is no longer democracy mm -hmm. that is dictatorship in the mm -hmm. party yeah when a wheelbarrow is put behind you and you are told there is a carcinogenic decision that you have to make make yeah mm -hmm. then that ceases to be a democracy. Mm -hmm. It might be nice for the ODM people and the Jubilee mm -hmm. Kieleweke side right now. Yeah. But tomorrow it is going to be worse mm -hmm. for the country. Right now they might be enjoying the, uh, the rulings that are happening here and there. But let us encourage people to have divergent opinions. Mm -hmm. You see Linda, your face and my face yeah. are different. Just like my opinion and your opinion. Should, yeah. We cannot have the same opinion. So let's sit in a room, have different opinions, mm -hmm. and let me see mine, let me come down, mm -hmm. and we take yours, you know. Mm -hmm. But let mine be hard. That is democracy. But, but, but there's always that option of you going independent if you feel like you really cannot abide by what the, the, the party or the majority yes. of the party dictate. So if it's a question of democracy, then one would argue, if you feel like, yes, the kitchen is too hot, then step out. And sometimes you've clearly seen that push, you know, you people sort of feel like the kitchen is too hot. Mm -hmm. Step out. And if you do not acknowledge that you need to step out, then we'll push you out literally, like what Tabitha, Tabitha says is, is unconstitutional or maybe it's not uh, right democratically. Hence, you've seen the power that has been happening and the part has not just been in jubilee party the part has been across different parties mm -hmm. we probably are expecting latest or in wiper party when they say they want to oist uh just mudama who again declares that i vomited them long time mm -hmm. ago now, now linda before tabitha says anything yes mm -hmm. um long time ago parties were not funded by the public mm. so they decided to say this amount of money goes into Jubilee and this amount of money goes into NASA. Yeah. So by the virtue of the fact that parties are funded by the public, they, are be they became public institutions. Mm. That's why we, we are the ones paying for the parties. And also MPs contribute monthly towards the party's affairs. Mm -hmm. okay. If you are not given time to air your views, Mm -hmm. Then what are you in the party? And if you say divergent opinions and you are pushed out of the party, yeah. then what are you? This precedent is dangerous and we are going to fall as a country. Mm -hmm. uh, what I can say about that is that, uh, you know, there, like uh, Eddie is saying that uh, if you're not given the opportunity to, to air out your views and your suggestions and opinions on party matters, mm -hmm. there is a way you do it, you know. You cannot be in a party, for example, you cannot be in the ruling party 
as a ruling party. And again, you appear as an opposition, you know. Yeah. You cannot right. be positioned in a ruling party. It cannot work like that. Mm -hmm. So if you have a divergent opinion, like you're saying, every 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 Kenyan has a as a, a democratic right to have a divergent opinion, so that mm -hmm. when you're high, that is democracy, which it is. But you are supposed to have a channel. Right. You are supposed to have a manner through which you communicate. Mm -hmm. If you have. Uh, you have an issue with how, uh, for example, the president is carrying out his operations, mm -hmm. and you are in the ruling party. You're not supposed to come out openly and start, you know, you know, saying uh, saying matters that uh, are contrary to what we look at a, a, a ruling party as it is. You know, mm -hmm. you become an opposition instead. So mm -hmm. that is disloyalty, and disloyalty to the party is not something that we can say is a, is a democracy. You know, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. ways through which we can talk about issues. And therefore, if you cannot channel uh, these your opinions and uh, suggestions in the right manner, then it, it only becomes uh, uh, a solution for the, for, the, for the president to find the best way to deal with such... Uh, so, such so, so you are politely agreeing mm -hmm. to what the president has done in terms of the pageant clearing the house. And anyway, yeah. a majority of people have been calling upon him to, you know, just put your house in order. Yeah. Probably this is his mm -hmm. best way of putting his house in order. And speaking of putting his house in order, mm -hmm. then one would question, uh, the Mount Kenya region is uh, a, a little bit imbalanced as it stands right now. We still are not clear on who's the kingpin. We still are not clear on what prospects the president enjoys at this particular region. We still are not clear on whether indeed the deputy president William Ruto has managed to you know, capture the Mount Kenya region. And as one would ask, will Kimunya rally region behind okay, well, will, will he rally the region behind uh, Horo? And now that we are having Kijana Steve, the political scientist, joining us all the way from Nyeri. What is the mood on ground, Kijana? Yes. You can well, hear us? Uh, thanks, Linda, for yes. that. And uh, before I can answer that, hello. Yes, hello. before I can answer that, I would like to first address the issue of party democracy. Mm -hmm. And one thing I would like to say is that uh, the reason as to why we really brought about plural, uh, pluralism or having a multi party thing was because we needed to have many voices, both dissenting and those that also agree. Mm -hmm. And we needed to have a party that has internal democracy. Mm -hmm. But what we have seen is that uh, we have changed that concept. And the concept we are now working on is loyalty to the party leader or loyalty to those who own the party. The thing should be having loyalty to the party manifesto, yeah. to the party ideology. But what we find right now is that we have parties that are not formed on the basis of ideology. Mm -hmm. They are not formed on the basis. Yeah. Hey, We're far. not able to hear him. Near is far. Do we still have Steve? I think we lost him, Near but all the far. same, yes. I think he brings a pertinent point here that we yeah. need to weigh in on. Mm -hmm. Our parties formed based on ideology, based on a proper and tangible manifestos, based on great rules so that you know you can confidently say that indeed this is a party and i think structures party structures are important that's mm -hmm. the reason why some of the parties across different parts of the country or, or the, of, of, of the continent so to speak have hold the ground for the longest of time and even the likes of the parties that are in the u.s you know the structures are tight democrats you talk about you know the labor parties also you know you talk about these parties that are pretty much strong such that you know years and years to come generations to come the leaders will come and go but the structures hold the people who are in this party. Are ours formed on such grounds, Edgar? Oh, yeah. Now, I thought you were talking to Tabitha. No, so. I'm talking to you. <laughs> you are, yeah. Now, uh, my friend from Nyeri, Pole Sana, Nyeri Nimbali Sana. Just a network in Atusumbua. It apika is a milima za apika za. Or money has been poured because I have to go to Nyeri Kubonga Kubaya. All right. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, he has brought in a pertinent. Mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. of party ide ideology mm -hmm. or the party chairman ideology okay or the party leader ideology all right now you know it brings us now to the table to start thinking of how to protect the, the party itself mm -hmm. or the party manifesto itself and the party ideology itself you know we might start out as as uh, people of a certain party with a mm -hmm. certain ideology yeah but later the party will give me powers to tell Linda, if you don't agree with me, you get out of this, of this. Uh, of, of this party. Yeah. You, 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 you know. Mm -hmm. Now, we have to discuss now about, about how the members are protected when they are facing such kind of 
a party leader. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we come back to you, Steve. And uh, yes, you are bringing in on board. You know, this is a key and pertinent point. And I think those are the bases where we should build our parties on. But it's probably contrary to what we witnessed today. So let's proceed. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I wanted to give the case of uh, United States, where we have uh, the, the Democrats and mm -hmm. the Republicans. Republicans. We find that the loyalty. The loyalty of the uh, Congress members and the senators and those who are part of the party is not to Trump or to any sort of party leader. Mm -hmm. It is to the party it's ideology the party. and what the party believes in. Right. And uh, that is, I think, what we need to uh, inculcate in our parties right now. Mm -hmm. Because for as long as parties are, uh, the loyalty to a party is based on an individual. What about when Uru Kenyatta goes in 2022? Mm -hmm. So who, that is why we have parties that after every uh, election uh, period, after every five years, those parties die. Mm -hmm. And that is why uh, with this constitution, the, 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 the purpose of the 2020 constitution, it actually eliminated uh, uh, an opposition. Mm -hmm. We don't have an opposition uh, currently in government. Everyone is part of government. And that is why we had to have a minority and a majority state. That just as it happens in uh, uh, the U.S. Mm -hmm. If the ODM was the majority party, yeah. it would be the party that would be running the government agenda in parliament, mm -hmm. despite not having uh, produced the president. Yeah. So this was to show that parties need to be strengthened. We need to have strong parties that believe in something, that uh, it is not about a party loyalty, mm -hmm. that even if you are ODM and you don't have the president at the moment, mm -hmm. you can be able to introduce the government agenda in parliament because your loyalty is not to your party leader, but to the concept and ideologies of your party. Yeah. And so we, can, we could have a, a, a situation where it, it is not about party leaders agreeing, but it is about different parties coming together mm -hmm. and uh, bringing their ideologies and policies together. Together, yeah. moving forward to Kemunya, uh, here in Mount Kenya, I have to agree that, uh, and I have to say that, currently the mood of the people uh, has been quite uh, negative. The people have been really feeling short change, especially mm -hmm. after the handshake. You remember uh, looking at the uh, psychology of yeah. the voter. Mm -hmm. The voter uh, came out solely with the objective of voting to send uh, Raila Amolo Odinga home. Yeah. So. Uhuru later came and told them that uh, we have now had a handshake. It was very hard for them to accept that. Accept that yeah. However, that was the best, the best thing at, uh, in the interest of the people at that time. Mm. But uh, now that we are here and uh, they feel that Uhuru promised Ruto uh, about uh, another 10 years after he lived, and uh, they still hold strong to that promise. Because uh, one thing about schools and the people of Central is that they are very uh, serious in. Uh, following promises and such uh, kind of agreements. But and uh, another thing that Russo did is that knowing that fact, he has always been courting them. He has been courting Mount Kenya for the, you know, for the last uh, three years, you know, continuously, because he knows that once they agree on something, then they can be very consistent. Mm -hmm. However, uh, with Temuya's introduction and uh, Duala's removal, I have to say that uh, I, I saw a lot of celebration in his constituency, Kipipiri, yeah. but the people here, the mood generally is not really uh, embracing that kind of uh, leadership. They don't really embrace him as a, a regional leader. Okay. The way Temunya occupies that position is not really uh, what uh, a personality like Kagwe or Kionjuri uh, occupies in the region. For him, maybe he could maybe uh, bring uh, the favor of uh, the, his constituency or his county uh, to, the, to, the, to the government, yeah. but not generally the region. The region uh, has really been complaining about development, and I think with what you've been seeing recently with yes, uh, Bateria coming and launching Mau Mau Roads all, all around, Mutahi Kagwe coming and giving briefs in uh, local hospitals, it is all uh, in a bid to bring back, back Mount Kenya to Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. Uhuru Kenyatta has totally lost control of the region. But I can say that uh, with what he is doing and the current changes he is making in the party, yeah. although it doesn't look, uh, the, 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 the people have not really embraced that. I have uh, witnessed the, the voters uh, in, the, in the past. And right. uh, it is very easy to change the, the mood of the voters. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what you need to change the mood of the voters is to just place an enemy. The reason mm -hmm. that's why Kikuyus uh, and the central people have really come out in large numbers in the recent elections, yeah. unlike in the past, 
is because there was an enemy created in the name of Raila Amolo Odinga. Uh, and, 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 and speaking of which, again, so, you also go to this side yeah. of Raila Odinga. There was also some, uh, you know, disappointment registered. And a couple of times we've even had a key of his supporters, you know, coming out to say that, you know what, we're done and dusted with Baba Baba, you know, failed us in a way. And in this case, then we're going to ensure that uh, the likes of DP, you know, win the elections as early as 6 a.m. in the morning. Coming to you, Tabitha, I know you've weighed in on this uh, already, but all the same, looking at it on the other side of the coin, um, the truth, the handshake has been considered as a unifying factor, something that was good for the entire nation. But then also, out of it, uh, you know, culminates some level of hate, resentment from another side of the DP and a majority of other people. What does this speak about ensuring that, again, we are able to enjoy this unity to perfection or to the maximum? And how far will it take us, knowing very well that these are politicians and we know how they play their games? After a while, you know, if their interests are served and you no longer need this person, you're going to drop them, then what is left of the Kenyans who are grappling for unity, courtesy of the handshake? Uh, Linda, that's a very good question. You know, for the, the reason why there is a difference in how everybody views the handshake altogether, yeah. as much as the, the president and the, the former premier say that it was solely meant to unify Kenyans, mm -hmm. but others feel like it's not the, it was not the main thing, is because they feel like the premier, for example, you've asked me that uh, the deputy president feels like uh, this was just one of those political moves because politicians are always politicians. Mm -hmm. um, if we can all view that uh, the handshake was for the purpose of unity, yeah. then we'll be speaking the same language. You'll not be seeing someone as, a, as, a, as an intruder or somebody who's just about to bring problems or just all about bringing problems to the party. Mm -hmm. So the deputy president, since the onset of the handshake, always said that uh, the purpose for which the handshake was made was to benefit the two key mm -hmm. roles involved, especially mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the former pre, uh, Prime Minister Prime of Kenya. Minister, yes. And uh, since the onset of the same, we saw that uh, NASA, as, a, as an opposition party, mm. uh, died. It's all of, uh, NASA has not been opposing anything at all in the government because it's become part of the government. So in other ways, we can say also that this was a political move. Mm -hmm. Because why else is uh, Honorable Raila Amolo Dinga not so uh, vocal about issues? We have seen things going wrong in the country. Mm he's -hmm. not come out to defend or say anything about them. Mm -hmm. This is the handshake. But before the handshake, like you remember the case of Hanway Guru with uh, NYS Saga? Yeah. He was the lead voice in calling for justice and saying that there was embezzlement of many uh you know a lot of money in, in the France, public yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh and therefore there was a need for accountability mm -hmm. but uh since that we've seen many leaders that have been doing the same things but the the premier the former premier has not been able to come out and you know talk against it mm -hmm. so since he got into the handshake if it was a matter just of unity, not political interest, then he should have also played the role of being an oh, opposition okay. leader whom he was mm -hmm. so opposition died and as edgar said Kenya is in a very wrong terrain mm -hmm. if something is not going to be done right. Mm -hmm. And yes. speaking of which, mm -hmm. let's look at the bigger perspective and the African uh, politics at mm -hmm. large and how much we've seen uh, leaders trying to first of all change constitutions so at least they can still remain in yes. power. Some of them altering, you know, key, uh, key, key, of course, clauses to ensure that they still stick in power. And, you know, we've literally seen a majority of them pointing fingers at each other. For instance, you'll see mm -hmm. right on Dinga pointing a finger at, you know, the likes of Kibaki, the likes of President Moi, the likes of actually President Uhuru Kenyatta saying that you're invading or you're going against the constitution. Mm -hmm. And the aspect of age has played out. Mm -hmm. It was considered to be the last bullet for right Honorable Raila Odinga, but it looks like it's not the last bullet again, based mm -hmm. on what again we are seeing here. Mm -hmm. And his uh, members of ODM, you know, pushing him, saying that you have to be on the ballot come 2022. I mean, can we keep recycling the leadership for the longest of time and expect anything new and expect mm -hmm. changes in the country? Yet we still still have, uh, you know, other people who are capable of getting into the helm and changing and transforming the country. Yeah, yeah, Linda, at the other time I was, uh, I was listening to, I was, uh, to a news bulletin, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, there were these um, kind of uh, suggestions that it's high time we bring new blood into politics. We need youth leaders, you know, uh, so that they believe that uh, youth have the energy, the capacity and all that mm -hmm. that they can bring at the table. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if we keep having the same leaders time and time again and not give other us opportunity to give us uh, a, a new ideas and the new energy into mm -hmm. the political mm -hmm. scenarios it is 
then as a country we are not going to be able to realize the change. Right. So if we want change as a country, change has to become by us choosing the right leaders. And as I say, there is nothing here a matter of age or anything. Mm -hmm. We have people coming in board wanting to buy for these positions. So if you have an issue, as for example, with Ryan Odinga being agely and he's supposed to go home not to buy for any position, mm -hmm. then you have an option to choose the leader From, you want. All right. And yes. Ed, Edgar, I, th I think I'll ask the same question. Yes. I mean, uh, look across Africa and one would ask, don't we have an opposition leader or a strong contender uh, that would march in and take the place of Baba that would march in and take the place of Kiza Besije that would march in and take the place of these figures you know that have been there in policies for the longest of time. Let's even, let's even overlook the presidency, the likes of Museveni and all that. I mean, don't we have others that would come in and match up to the game of being the best opposition leaders and transformers? Um, uh, Linda, I, I, I can say that uh, for now we don't have someone like Baba. Oh yeah? And uh, if he has no other bullet, we can still give him one more. Can he? Can he <laughs> nurture somebody? Can he nurture somebody? Yeah. We yeah. can go to the store, pick a bullet, and uh -huh. we can give it to him. Yes, you can come in, Kijana. I know you're eating wherever you are. Yes, we all. Oh, yeah. just finish. All right. Kijana comes in. Uh -huh. We just finish. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with the Ken with the Kenyan population, they are looking for another Baba in someone else. Now that becomes a mistake. Or that becomes a mistake. Okay. Edgar is different. Baba is different. But you know, mm -hmm. I have to believe in myself mm -hmm. to challenge Baba mm -hmm. enough for Baba to seed. Now, you remember mm -hmm. in around 1990 or somewhere mm -hmm. before that, mm -hmm. Baba challenged the father. Mm -hmm. He walked into a meeting of the father and told him, I think you, you, whatever you are doing with Moi is not right. Mm -hmm. Face Moi and confront him. So Baba started his war early mm -hmm. when his father was still alive yeah we need someone to face baba and to oust baba someone if like someone... David president william ruto who's coming who's closing who's, who's, who's inching into those directions no 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 uh, william Why is no, no. not hosting baba in any way no, william is running him, his own way. don't you think he's, he's he's coming up politically you know and his mm -hmm. strategies and all that are considered to match up those ones of baba oh, oh, yeah william ruto is a student of baba in a way yes and one time they were with baba somewhere and he pushed he pushed the government when they, uh, there was the post-election violence until Kibaki ceded ground. So mm -hmm. these people know each other, Kwavilemba. Yes. But I don't want to compare Baba and Ruto. Mm -hmm. Baba has his own way of running and Ruto has his own way mm -hmm. of running. Mm -hmm. Now, let me weigh in on the issues of uh, the central Kenya province yes. and Emos Kimunya and Ruto factor. Mm. With a lot of caution and with a lot of humility, I want to say that Emos Kimunya if he was going to rally central Kenya behind Uru Kenyatta, then Kenyatta is wrong and his, his advisors are wrong. Okay. With a lot of caution, I want to say this, that the deputy president is the man to watch in central Kenya. I'm saying this with a lot of caution. K with, I, I'm not Steve. sure about it. <laughs> now, Kijana can yeah. help me. Kijana Steve, do you approve of that now that you're in here? Do you approve of what Edgar is saying? <laughs> Well, what I can say mm -hmm. uh, before I even uh, go back to uh, the opposition issues is that uh, Central Kenya, currently I can say that 70% uh, of the people, their feeling is that uh, they believe that uh, William Ruto deserves his part in government. What's but happened, what what's happened to the statement that you can only rent a Kikuyu but you cannot Kikuyu, buy them? But you cannot buy one. Eh. Yes, well, well uh, you remember in 2013, uh, or in the run-up to 2013, uh, it was agreed that, uh, you know, this uh, alliance that had Budavadi, that it was going to be Budavadi who would run. And um, before 2013, some years ago, uh, or three, two years ago, you will not expect that Uhuru Kenyatta will be a front runner for the yeah. 2013 general election. Mm -hmm. Kikuyu, uh, as, I, as I say, you just need to play an enemy figure, just like we had, uh, that they had placed in uh, Raila Odinga, yeah. and they will now come up in large numbers to vote against it. So right now, the feeling is that the people right now are with William Ruto, but as we move forward to 2022 election, mm -hmm. what uh, the Yakin Pin, uh, who is Uru Kenyatta, will tell them, yeah. it is likely to influence how they will vote. Okay. The moment Uru Kenyatta comes and tells them that I have these issues and these reservations with William Ruto, mm -hmm. These people are going to really move forward in that direction. Mm -hmm. the, the so the, 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 the 70% are not Kenya, genuine with DP as it stands. 
as it stands to the percent of the people in the machinery, you go and ask that uh, Mamamboga who is in the village, and especially having been oppressed, you've seen the kind of uh, taxes that have been happening and the kind of policies that have been happening. These people believe that Uhuru Kenyatta at the moment has failed them. And that is why Uhuru Kenyatta is really trying his best to redeem himself and redeem his image and control, mm -hmm. not just over the Mount Kenya lead leaders, and the Mount Kenya parliamentarians, but also over the Mount Kenya population, because that is what is most important, especially going forward, uh, forward to BBI. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, as it stands, the most favorable thing to our Ruto is the current failure in service delivery and the implementation of the Jubilee Manifesto. But he's part the of the region. government. The he's, part, he's, part of the, he's part and parcel of this Jubilee government that we are talking about. Well, he has. Uh, if you if you look keenly, how the likes of uh, Nyoro and those who uh, you know move forward with him, especially from this region, they have really been running an agenda that uh, William Ruto no longer has stake. Okay. He no longer has influence to make any decisions, mm -hmm. to implement any policies, any government project on behalf of the government. Mm -hmm. The only thing you will have taken uh, responsibility is when you are going all over around launching projects some of which are not fully uh, implemented. But the moment he stopped that, the moment he was denied that prerogative or that uh, kind of uh, right... Do you suppose he was denied out of malice or back. genuinely there were some discrepancies that were playing out and hence there was needed to salvage that? Uh, in terms of uh, stopping uh, his uh, going around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, at some point in time, you well, have the president endorsing him and saying that when you see him around, just know that I have sent him. Then what could have informed the change of tone? And was it informed by malice or it was a genuine move towards protecting what one would have considered as, you know, the allegations that were purported on aspect of corruption? Well, uh, I have to say that this is not about corruption. If it is about corruption, we have seen that uh, the fight against corruption was actually at some point to weaponize, yeah. to ca kind of, uh, you know, uh, calm uh, the William root of faction down. But we have not seen the, the sword of the fight against corruption really fight those who are in Kieleweke and those who are really uh, in support of the, the, the government. We have seen that uh, uh, those who are maybe uh, pro ruto or those who are termed as rebels and those who are actually corrupt, mm -hmm. whenever they actually uh, came and said that uh, we have repented our sins of... Uh, supporting the, the Deputy President Ruto, and we are now fully supporting President Kenyatta, and we are fully under him. Their sins would uh, automatically be washed. Their prosecution would uh, automatically end. So we can say that the stopping William Ruto was not about Mali or, uh, or about corruption. It was an issue of politics. Mm -hmm. It was an issue of interest. And politics is generally about interest. So I think it reached a point where the, 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 the Mount Kenya or those who are actually in the government, or the, rather I want to call it the establishment, realized that uh, this guy, William Ruto, has started going to Mount Kenya, mm -hmm. getting the support of Mount Kenya without Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. Even right. though Uhuru Kenyatta did not ever go to Rift Valley mm -hmm. without the blessings of Ruto. Mm -hmm. He went to Rift Valley through Ruto. Mm -hmm. But Ruto reached a point where he does not want to come to Mount Kenya through Uhuru, who is, the, who is uh, basically the Mount Kenya region king. Okay, so okay. I think it was a, a matter of uh, politics where uh, I think those who are around Uhuru and even Uhuru himself felt uh, that this person is kind of uh, bypassing me, he's kind of disrespecting me as the king king of Mount Kenya. Mm -hmm. So it was not about Mali, it was not about Ruto launching immature projects. Yeah. Or, or, or kind of thing. Okay, so let's listen into and, what uh, Tabitha has to say over the same, yeah? Briefly, let's just hear what Tabitha has to say over the same. Because, Tabitha, uh, from what Kijana Steve says, is that 70% as of now of the Mount Kenya region would be, of course, in favor of uh, Deputy President William Ruto. But he also acknowledges mm -hmm. that, you know, when we inch closer mm -hmm. to 2022, which is actually the creme de la creme, that's basically what you want to hear about, mm -hmm. their likelihood that they're going to change the tone. So who is fooling who in this game of politics when you look at this realignment political realignments togetherness that is being witnessed across different key leaders one would sit down and now start asking this question who is fooling who is baba being fooled is president Uhuru kenyatta being fooled is the dp being fooled and what what really is playing out uh like uh kijana steve has said mm -hmm. that uh, before the president uh, when he was seeking to be the president of kenya before he got the presidency he had the blessing of ruto 
in the Rift Valley. Yeah. And Ruto, as you said, Ruto is going to uh, the central parts of Kenya by himself without the blessings of Uru Kenyatta. So mm -hmm. ne necessarily we can say that the whole of central province is, is backing up Uru, uh, the deputy president, mm -hmm. William Ruto, in his race for the presidential seat, you see. What we can say is that uh, at the end of the day is who plays the cards right? Mm -hmm. How do you sell manifestos? You know, the, the, the whole concept of secession politics is, is overrated at times, you know? Mm -hmm. And this is what we need to look at. You know, when we want to elect our next president, for example, it's not supposed to be that Uru Kenyatta or the president of the Republic of Kenya say that uh, after 10 years he's going to give Ruto. Mm -hmm. He's going to give Ruto the presidential, um, let's say the, the presidential seat or, uh, or, or give him the, the, the button. On what basis? Is he worth it? Has, mm -hmm. he, has, has he proved to Kenya that he's worth holding a presidential office? So it should be on the basis of merit and what he can deliver. The service delivery and how he can fight corruption and how it, it can bring Kenya into a, stable, mm -hmm. into a stable place is what is important. The interests of the Kenyans. You know, it's, not, it's not all about party ideologies and mm -hmm. interests. Like the other time I was listening to to David Murray, they say that mm. uh, that uh, uh, the, the 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 kind of uh, situation between the president and his deputy is more of a personal thing that the, only them they can understand, mm. and that is the reason why you see when in public. They appear to be very cool, mm. and yet when you come to the ground, things are quite different. We see that. Uh, the president is really uh, the deputy president is really hit by the current changes and mm -hmm. the political realignment and things like that. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we need to elect our leaders on the basis of merit, okay. not that you're supposed to take the presidential position after ten years because mm -hmm. you're promised. That is not the way to go. If you're going to continue doing things the same way every every time, year in year out during our election period, then we're going to, not going to realize the change we want. Democracy yeah. is not going to be upheld. And Kenyans are going to continue complaining and complaining. So mm -hmm. you have the responsibility. You have the chance to choose the leader you want. Mm -hmm. You have the brains to carry along to. Linda, right. before, you, uh, 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 before you come in, uh, this yes. is actually being directed to you. Uh -huh. So uh, someone is writing to us and they say, yes. uh, uh, President Uru Kenyatta alisema, kumi yangu na yeah. kumi ya DP. Alikuwa na manisha kumi yake ya presidency na yes. kumi ya DP yeah, as deputy president William Ruto. <laughs> <laughs> like how? Labda hata ni kumi, nyumba kumi, nini? Nyumba kumi initiative. Nyumba kumi initiative. Kumi yako uko kumi yangu hapa. Yes. So people are taking it that way and right. they are calling politics a game of, of dirt. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, now, I, I want to tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. William Ruto will not physically go against the president yeah. because... He is the principal assistant of president's principles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The president cannot oppose himself. Yeah. So William Ruto can play his politics away from the eyes of the president. You know, yeah. that's why William Ruto has never come out publicly to, to tell off the president, mm -hmm. wait until it is bare knuckles. Mm. Then you will see now war that has never been seen in the country. Mm -hmm. Because um, right now, William Ruto has to play his game and he is not going to go against the Constitution yeah. because the Constitution stipulizes the role of the deputy president in the country. Now, kumi yake, kumi yangu, mm -hmm. is a word that was used to woo the uh, Kalenjin nation. And it worked. Mm -hmm. And people in the Kalenjin mm -hmm. nation, uh, they know how to keep promises. Okay. And they will remind you daily. All right. Uh, Akina Tabitha calls them Jalango. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Jolango. The, the, the Jolango. Yeah. Those, those people uh, uh, are known for something else. Mm -hmm. um, Kikuyus are known to keep their promises. Uh, Kalenjins are known to uh, also think about it. So whether Uhuru has changed or not, I think he should change tactic on how to approach this. He should tell a lie that is believable yeah. to the people of the, 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 the Mount Kenya. Mm. Something that is believable. Something that they can believe and they can follow, they can follow Uru Kenyatta. But I'm sure, maybe later, mm -hmm. when now it's bare knuckles, yeah. people can now talk about which direction to go. All right. I give up on politics yes see if i uh, know you could be having other reservations please maintain that for the next show that we'll have but we'll not go before touching on this and i think this is something that my team might need to confirm but all the same again
Gikomba market early morning on Thursday at around 3 a.m. engulfed in a fire which affected the serial part of the Mitumba section. And you ask ourselves, why do we have these perennial cases? We've been discussing it. What could be informing this, Steve? Uh, I think there is a lot of uh, interest uh, that uh, happening around that market. And uh, there are a lot of actually big uh, business uh, cartels also that uh, are at play. But um, I, I have been following this case because these fires, as you've noted, could have been very perennial. Mm -hmm. they, they happen almost every other season. And um, we have not seen uh, basically any uh, prosecution even in the past. We, 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 we don't know where this kind of fire comes from. Mm -hmm. So I, I tend to believe that it is uh, either we have seen uh, in the past when, uh, you know, uh, there is, a, there is a, a tendency of when you want to really kind of push people away from somewhere, mm -hmm. you really start by really uh, kind of, you know, showing them that you are not welcome here. And the only way to show, show you that you are not welcome here is by trying to... Uh, you know, show you that, uh, you know, to kind of uh, just uh, conduct fires uh, or just bring kind of uh, chaos. And uh, we have, they, they, I have seen uh, in the past there was an attempt to actually uh, take it over and uh, convert that kind of land uh, some, uh, in the past. But I think what, what is happening is uh, I think a lot of uh, business interests at play or probably uh, land issues that could be at play because the only reason as to why I would ban your place if I want you to go. And if you see that uh, something has been banned and the government is not as aggressive mm. in kind of find, finding the perpetrators and putting them to book, then you could tell that the government probably has an idea of mm. who does it and why they do it. Because the government has a monopoly uh, of information. Mm -hmm. The government has a very strong uh, intelligence system. So if you see the government seeing that uh, this has been done, of course they'll come out, out in the public for the optics and say that uh, we are going to investigate. But we don't see uh, that kind of investigation uh, expedited and arrest done. Mm -hmm. But uh, before I even uh, conclude on that, I would like to just comment on a point that uh, was very important about opposition uh, politics, even as we close on politics. Yeah, yeah. If you look at uh, this issue of, uh, uh, we were talking about the Bobby Wine, where is, where is the new uh, the, the, the CJ, where is the new Raila Amolo Odinga? Yeah. What I want to say is this, uh, as uh, Kijana, I'm actually a party leader of the uh, Empowerment and Liberation Party. It's a you young have that, you have uh, that. leader party. Edgar, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, and, and it's a registered party. We are going to be launching it after the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. in, uh, and uh, maybe we are going to invite all the young people around the country. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the young people's party. So what, uh, what uh, I have seen is, BCJ was, was not able to oust Museveni. Why? If you look at the history of Museveni and BCJ, mm -hmm. they actually went to the forest together. Yeah. BCJ was Museveni's doctor, right? Yes. Uh, well, they were in the forest trying to cause a revolution. If you look at Raila Odinga and Huru Kenyatta, they, they have had a past, although Raila Odinga has had a lot of uh, input towards uh, the democracy of Kenya, okay, yeah. they are actually people who have been in turn with both of them. They are people who actually share the same ideas. They are, they are in the same dispensation. Mm -hmm. So the only way we can create a new wave of opposition, and of course uh, it is not just opposition, but a new wave of leadership, is when young people, come and, uh, you know, people who have not been in the previous dispensation, mm -hmm. people who have not been part of the old guard, come and like we have seen Bobby White. Bobby White is taking uh, Uganda by storm. Mm -hmm. We have seen Malema. Mm -hmm. Malema is also taking uh, South Africa by storm. Mm -hmm. And so the only way that Kenya can introduce a new wave of uh, opposition politics mm -hmm. is when the young people who are the most oppressed. But, but, but taking, by storm uh, with so much intolerance, briefly as we wind up, by storm but with so much intolerance right. and uh, you know sometimes when they come again and they bring good ideologies you can argue it well but when they come with so much intolerance then it it does not yes. do any good to the country. Uh, what I would like to see uh, is that uh, there has been a, a deliberate effort to brand the young upcoming leaders as uh, intolerant and okay. violent. But mm -hmm. what I would like to say is this. Unless 
if you have looked at most uh, protests, including in the U.S. that are ongoing, and even those in uh, Uganda, until the police respond, yeah. until the police come out as chaotic against uh, peaceful protesters and uh, peaceful processions, peaceful meetings, that is when they turn intolerant and chaotic. When Bobby Wine holds a meeting uh, and maybe hundreds or thousands of young people come out to listen to him, and then they actually adjust, and then they kind of oppose that and they kind of, uh, you know, uh, react to that. That's right. when they are branded intolerant. But okay. what about if the government does not interfere in what they are doing? Mm -hmm. I think, I don't think young people are really intolerant. If you've seen uh, the Malema kind of way, and uh, his party currently taking over uh, parliament, they are increasing their numbers gradually. I think young people are not intolerant, mm -hmm. and uh, I would not advise a, a situation where we young people believe that we can rise to power by disrespecting those who are in power mm -hmm. and by really coming out violently because we are already out of the violent era. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I have always insisted since uh, the beginning is that mm -hmm. unless we establish an ideological identity yeah. of the young people mm -hmm. and of the, the, the majority of press that they can identify with, that we speak their language, a leadership that speaks their language. Mm -hmm. That is when we are going to have change. But as you've seen, the reason that why Kenyans have given up and all generally up, Africans yeah. have given up on uh, current uh, opposition leaders, including right. even Raila Odinga, the likes of Mugabadi, is because they don't have an ideological identity. Right. It is about them and occupying power. It doesn't have to be about occupying power. Uh -huh. It has to be about an ideological identity. What do you believe in? Yeah. Drive it and drive it in a in right. a manner that is outspoken and in a manner that identifies with the people. That is mm -hmm. the only kind of opposition uh, leadership that we are going to create. Thank you so much, Kijana Steve. And we have about three minutes to wind up. So that one is left for Edgar and uh, Tabitha in uh, one and a half, one and a half. Then what would ask? This uh, Kikomba fire, as you know, perennial for that matter. And as one would say, I mean, politics has hugely been labeled as one of the key factors that play out in such a scenario. I mean, what can we do to deal with this? And how genuine are, uh, is the leadership actually towards addressing this? We've seen uh, Sonko coming out to say that, oh, we're going to get, we're going to set up good markets and, you know, uh, well-structured markets. But, uh, the, I mean, it seems like it's not happening. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Linda, the matter of uh, the, the perennial power, the perennial fires, at Gikomba mm. is, is, is becoming now issue of gravest concerns. And uh, I think they know the perpetrators, you know, the victims know the perpetrators of the fire because yeah. we cannot say that the fire just, just start themselves off, you know. So there must, there must be somebody who, is, who has a special interest in this place. And uh, the better you come out and talk about uh, these matters, or if there is any kind of uh, disagreements, or you know, we have you know in marketplaces, you know, there are always those uh, times when uh, uh, things are not working out because uh, there are disagreements here and there. Mm -hmm. You can have a dialogue, talk yeah. about them, and then uh, the government now, uh, the county government of Nairobi, to be specific, needs to put uh, structures that. Uh, that are, are, are permanent, you mm -hmm. see, and also that can help, that can help in curtailing the fire, mm -hmm. the fire outbreak. I want to say one thing in a minute right. about what Kijana Steve said, about youth being in politics. First of all, I want to congratulate him for his new party. I hope I'll be part of, the, of it. As you I don't want to form yours? Mm -hmm. Not just yet? Not just yet. All right. We can begin with his. Okay. Uh, youth in, leader, in leadership position is a very good idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, youths are very... Uh, capable, they are strong, they have the ideologies, and they have the energy that we need to run a country. Mm -hmm. The only thing we have is not a space, you see. We need to be given a space at the table so that we can have the bargaining power. We can mm -hmm. be able to talk about what we think this country can go along with, you see. Mm -hmm. So if you're involved in the process of uh, leadership and the process of governance, and we're brought uh, to the table to also give our opinions. The, the problem is we are not given the space. We are not involved in the process of decision making in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, well, like we say, the, the likes of Honorable Reno Dinga and the, and, and, the, and the politicians who have been there since time immemorial, yeah. they've not been nurturing these young leaders. And therefore, they view more, many of the youth as intolerant, which is not the case, actually. They right. use of, of sound mind, of capability, and of great ideologies and minds in this country if mm -hmm. they're given a opportunity to execute, mm -hmm. this country will go and be speared ahead. I well, think of course, uh, one would then argue mm -hmm. what has happened with the youths that we have in leadership right now. Have they done justice? That, uh, have they done what we would have expected of them? Anyway, subject for another mm -hmm. day. As we wind up, um, Edgar. Yes. 
Now, Linda, yes. people seem to be having their own parties. So I promise you by next week, um, <laughs> I have my... Let's listen to what will be the ideologies and all that, and then we'll see how good uh, it and is. I'll, and I'll come with mine. Yeah. I now want to weigh in on uh, the Gikomba issue. Yeah. I want to say that fires are natural. Fire is natural sometimes, okay. and it can occur accidentally. And when it occurs, it can get the mitumbas around there, around there. So sometimes we don't have to read malice in when we see fire coming up. Okay. It's like a storm, it's like something else. But one thing, we need a functional 911. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem in Nairobi is that 911 is Kanjo and the fire brigade is Kanjo. Mm -hmm. And the Soko rescue team, as we wind up. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Now, you see, they have to separate 911 yes. with the fire department so that mm -hmm. you can call 911, which can either alert the fire department yeah. or can either alert the ambulance or can either alert the police. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, it goes like this. You have the planning, you have execution, and you have the audit. Yeah. You cannot be the planner, the executioner, and the auditor. Okay. Now, the Kibaki government did very well in, it had the planning ministry, yeah. finance ministry, and audit, and audit in, in itself. So in the city fires, to contain city fire, let us have 911 different. Mm -hmm. That will decide what to do with the information that you're calling. Right now, 911 is dead. Okay. We have none. All right. We are uh, Kenya is in a dust. Well, in, the numerous times we've tried calling that, but sadly time is not on our side, Tapi. Let's just wind up on this yeah. one because we have another segment coming on board mm -hmm. on Nanu's lifestyle. A whole different, you know, ease mm -hmm. altogether as we move into the entertainment industry. So, Kijana State political scientist Edgar Koske political analyst and Tabitha Ogutu, social justice advocate. Thank you so much for your time. Forgive me, Tabitha, for starting with the gentlemen as opposed to starting with the ladies. Okay. But they say ladies first, men before. All the same. Thank you so much for the great insight. Thank you so much for your time. Looking forward to see you some other time. And you do not know anywhere because we'll be right back with much more.